Oh, what is the upskies, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the GX WrestleCast. We are on episode 70, 70 of my weekly recap show where I go through all of the major WWE and AEW shows, give you the recap, let you know what's going on, tell you if there's any really good matches to go out of your way to check out, or if you should just avoid the show entirely. And if they have any big pay-per-views, I will also be reviewing those as well on a separate episode. So let's dive right into this. We are kicking it off with Monday Night Raw there in Buffalo, New York City. That's pretty wicked. Kicking off with Finn Balor. He is in the ring looking very poo-poo pants. I don't know what is going on. And in fact, he is poo-poo pants because Finn Balor is still pissed off at Damian Priest for screwing him over at Money in the Bank. So Rhea and Dom show up. They try to calm down Finn. They fail, and Finn Balor leaves. So way to go, a-hole. Buffalo rudely boos Dom Mysterio, as is tradition. Seth Rollins comes out eating buffalo wings. Oh, fuck, I would crush, like, 50 pounds of wings right now. Uh, Dom absolutely loses his mind. He's very upset. Seth tells Dom he will spank him tonight. He giggles. And he leaves. A pretty solid opener. I know the crowd got nice and warmed up for this. You know, getting the getting the vocals ready, booing Dom Mysterio and all that stuff. Pretty good. We got a tag match now. It is Drew McIntyre and Matt Riddle going up against Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser of Imperium with Gunter. We got Kaiser tosses Riddle to Vinci, who catches him into a suplex. Just outrageously, uh, outrageously strong is Mr. Giovanni. Drew hits the Claymore. Riddle applies an ankle lock, and the good guys pick up a win here. Solid tag match. I mean, mostly Imperium just closing off uh, the ring. Kind of standard tag team stuff. Some nice teamwork there from Riddle and Drew McIntyre. I, I, kind of, I feel like I remember they were... Were they friendly before this as a tag team? I don't 100% remember that one. But anyway, uh, backstage, Gunther yells at Vinci and Kaiser because they didn't win. We got Rhea Ripley. She starts playing Dr. Phil backstage for Finn and Damian Priest, making them work out their issues. And they do just that. Way to go, Rhea. Good job. We got Kevin and Sami Zayn getting interviewed. They are asked, what's next? Sami says, Whoever don't matter to me, Rhea and Dom show up unannounced. This makes Kevin semi lose his mind. Pretty funny little segment here. Got Dom Mysterio with Rhea Ripley going up against Seth Rollins. Dom jumps Seth before the bell. Dom runs into the crowd. Seth chases him, but runs into a sneak attack from Finn and Damien, who are friends again. Kevin and Sammy run down with chairs for the save, and we got a six-man tag team match made for the main event later on. Ricochet faces off with Logan Paul. Ricochet buttering up the crowd a little bit. Logan Paul comes out. He starts trash-talking Buffalo. That goes well. Uh, He also calls Ricochet unprofessional. Ricochet says, shut your mouth. He does a front flip to the outside, lands on his feet right in front of Logan. Little stare down, absolutely badass. Not the first time I've seen Ricochet do this. The first time I saw him do it was in NXT with um, Velveteen Dream, if anyone remembers that guy. And uh, yeah, I shit my pants the first time I saw that. That was just so badass. Logan Paul goes for a cheap shot, but Ricochet dodges, hits Logan with a sliced bread, and that's that. Good segment right here. Again, I am a fan of Logan Paul in the WWE. He's entertaining, man. Thumbs up. Becky Lynch versus Zoe Starks with Trish Stratus is up next. Zoe with a neat, twisty, atomico thing. I enjoyed that. Uh, she also blasts Lynch with a clean kick to the face. We got the slow mo replay on that, and she clocked her right in the face. How you doing? Zoe goes for the Z360. Becky counters, kicks Trish just because, and then rolls up Zoe uh, for the win. And uh, oh, she also grabs the tights. So she stole the victory. Oh, oh. But uh, honestly, Zoe looking great against the uh, former champion. So uh, without them, you know, putting Zoe into a main event match or anything, I feel like they're kind of solidified her with a victory here over over Lynch or not a victory, but, you know, being on the same level kind of puts her in the main event player spot. I'm into it. She's one of my favorites on Raw right now in terms of uh, the women's division. And this was a really good match. Seven and a half out of ten. We got... Kevin Owens and Zayn and Rollins. I don't... uh, Owens, Sami Zayn, and Rollins. I'm having a moment. Give me a second. I'll work through it. They have a hilarious little hype-up session backstage. Wow, that was uh, the smallest sentence 
in my notes here and I fucked it up. Thumbs up. We got Alpha Academy. They're doing a graduation ceremony for Maxine Dupree. Maxine delivers a pretty solid speech with a lot of flirting with Otis. I mean, okay. Poor Chad. Poor Chad. Uh, the gowns get removed. Gable presents Maxine with her very own jacket. Oh, that's nice. <coughs> Excuse me. almost died a little bit. Viking Raiders, they come out to yuck all the yum. Valhalla blindsides Maxine and then steals her jacket. Those hooligans, how could you do that? Fun little segment right here. Thumbs up. It is now time for Shayna Baszler to fight Emma. Just Emma. She has nothing else going on. Emma has a pretty good start, but she gets quickly shut down by Shayna. She locks in the Karafuda clutch and Emma taps. Uh, you know, not a very good match. It was just whatever. Ronda makes her way towards Shayna. Baszler stands her ground. They get it on, King. They start fighting. Rousey locks in an arm bar, but Shayna escapes. And uh, yeah, crowd not too into this. I still feel like there's a little bit of confusion of who they're supposed to cheer for. But I mean, I I didn't hate it. I still I kind of like Ronda going up against Shayna. Would have preferred if they just stayed a tag team. But I mean, it's it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So there's that. We got Cody Rhodes. He cuts a promo. Uh, He's a little bit all over the map here. He's just talking about this, talking about that. But eventually he gets to calling out Brock Lesnar for the rubber match at SummerSlam. Crowd going bananas. So, you know, fun stuff. That's definitely a SummerSlam quality match. Brock Lesnar versus uh, Cody Rhodes. We've already seen it this year, but eh, why not again? We got The Miz versus Ciampa in a no DQ match. Oh, righty. This is, oh yeah. Ciampa puts Miz... In the announcer chair, then knees him. They go tumbling. It's just a mess of a crash. I liked it. Crowd begging for tables. The Miz teases them with one, but then he puts it back. I I love when they do that. I'll give it a thumbs up. Champa gives them what they want. Gives them a table. Top rope. White noise. Through the table. Holy shit. Thumbs up. Then Bronson shows up out of nowhere. Attacks Champa. Hits him with a massive tsunami splash. Miz pins and steals the win. I mean, God. uh, So good. To see my boy Champa, kind of looking like he was in NXT again. Uh, Hasn't had the best luck since his call-up. And, man, I love him fighting The Miz. As always, The Miz can just a very solid performer all around. Lots of weapons in play, hard-hitting spots, tables, of course. 8 out of 10, this was great. Bronson versus Champa up next, I'm thinking. I, I can get down with that. Unless, or I don't know if The Miz is going to be teaming up with Bronson. They've kind of played with that a little bit. I don't know. We got Liv and Raquel Rodriguez chirping the number one contenders, Chelsea and Sonya, backstage. Rhea Ripley shows up. She warns the tag team champions to stay out of her business. Okay, then. Rock, uh, Rodriguez not intimidated by Rhea Ripley. It was, you know, solid segment. Chelsea was pretty good in this. I, I quite enjoy Chelsea. She's quite entertaining. And, you know, Raquel versus... Um, uh, what's her face? Rhea Ripley. Eh, I mean, eh, it'd be nice two big women kind of going big powerhouse women going at it. I just I'm not that big on Raquel. Like she's just very fine. She's just like nah. She's there. She's fine. She does uh, nothing amazing. Nothing like bad. She's kind of plain boring. Anyway, we move on. It is Caden Carter, Carter, Caden Carter, and Katana Chance versus Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville. A nice assisted top rope splash from Carter and Chance. We got Chelsea rolls up uh, Chance. Sonya assists with the pin, stealing the victory. Uh, match was too short to really judge it. A little bit disappointed here. I liked what I saw in the limited amount of time. So maybe next week they'll give them a little bit more time to uh, show off what they got. It is time for the main event. Six-man tag team match. Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn, and Seth Rollins versus The Judgment Day with Rhea Ripley. Damien accidentally bumps Finn off of the ropes. Whoopsie daisy. Seth hits a pedigreed. Finn saves Damien. Ripley distracts Sammy. Priest hits a choke slam. Finn with the coup de gras on Zane for the huge W. This is a big W right here for Judgment Day. A uh, bit of tension between Judgment Day throughout the match there with Finn and Damien. But um, they were on fire, man. Beating uh, three champions in this match. I mean, and it was pretty good overall. A little bit standard in terms of the wwe tag team formula but crowd was liking it not bad seven at that and that's the end of the show thought it was fairly enjoyable a little bit safe a little little eh, but that that miz and champa match that was that was really good stuff i would recommend you check that one out otherwise just a pretty solid show six and a half out of ten 
we will go on to, let's do NXT 2.0, kicking it off with, you guessed it, it's the Judgment Day, working overtime this week. Uh, they're having an NXT homecoming, but not you, Dom. You, you don't get to come. Uh, we got Carmelo and Trick Williams. They interrupt the moment. Trash talk takes place, and the tag team match is made for later. Solid opening segment. Uh, the Dawn is interviewed about the high stakes match Stacks made last week. The Dawn is a little bit nervous. Oh, over here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Chase U with Thea Hale now going up against Dempsey and Drew Gulak, the goo. Duke with a top rope slam driver thingy. Looked pretty dope. Uh, the wave starts taking place in the crowd courtesy of the Chase U students. They always have like a little section of Chase U students. They were getting everybody doing the wave. Chase goes nuts. Duke hits a flatliner, and Chase U picks up the W here. Solid match. Chase on fire, getting the crowd going. Really nice to see Chase U at 100% again. They're very, very entertaining. I like it. We got Von Wagner. Oh, no. What's he got this time? Von Wagner telling Mr. Stone more sad stories about growing up being Von Wagner. The monster. Um, I mean, you got, they definitely have to stick with the pre-recorded segments. They're just way better. Whenever it's live or whatever, it's just god-awful. So this was passable. It was okay. We got Cora Jade versus Kalani Jordan, whose name I think I got wrong last week. My apologies. And Jordan is with Dana Brooke. Jordan goes for a springboard. Cora kicks the ropes. And Kalani takes a pretty good tumble right there. Jade plants Jordan with a DDT for the quick W. Like I said, kind of a fast match. It had a good pace to it. I, I was enjoying the pace. A little bit sloppy at spots, but pretty solid overall performance for the newcomer Kalani Jordan. Cora, you know, she's not the best in the ring, but God, I just love her. Cora attacks uh, Jordan after the match. Dana Brooks in for the save. Braun Breaker is going up against Ilya Dragunov next. Oh my God. Drugganoff suplexes Breaker over the ropes. They both go tumbling to the floor hard. That was a little bit scary. Drugganoff hitting a bunch of German suplexes. Nails a torpedo. Uh, Braun kicks out of that. That was ridiculous. Breaker breaks Ilya in half with a midair spear. Drugganoff kicking out of that. Like, holy shit. Ilya throws everything at Braun. Knockout forearm and two more torpedoes to finally put down Braun ba Breaker. Baker. Braun Breaker for the W. And oh my god, man. I just... You're, I'm never going to be disappointed with Ilya Dragunov. Just a hell of a match right here. And, and drug, I mean, fucking Braun Breaker too, man. He is on fire lately. He's been putting on some bangers in the ring. Got to give him a shout out as well. Hard hitting match. Dragunov just, God, I, I love watching that guy sell. He just, everything looks so painful. He just looks so out of it. Awesome near falls. And like I said, man, Breaker on fire right now. He's doing better as a non-champion than he was with the title. So really enjoying this eight and a half out of 10. Check this one out. Wesley is interviewed backstage. It gets interrupted by Dom Mysterio, who I said was not supposed to be here. Now he's making me look like an idiot. He's challenging him to an open challenge. Wesley says, sure, why not? Dom wants it next week, though. So, you know, classic Dom being a dick. I Okay, so Wesley versus Dom. It should be interesting. It is Tiffany Stratton's turn to fight. She is going up against Ivy Nile. Tiffany hits a snug stomp to Ivy's face and then just falls on her, too. Like, ouch. Stratton nails the moonsault for a W. Crowd chanting, you tapped out to Tiffany. The whole entire match was honestly quite annoying. The match was short. Uh, you know, pretty decent performances overall. Not my favorite match. Stratton yells at the crowd after. And I don't blame her because they were super annoying. It is now time for Channing Stacks Lorenzo. I, I didn't even know his name was Channing Lorenzo. He's just always been Stacks to me, but there you go. He is going up against Joe Coffey with Gallus, and this is for the fate of the Don. So I think if Stacks wins, he gets out. If he doesn't, something will happen. Okay? All right. So Stacks appears to be taking the fall for Coffey after eating a lariat. Looks like they're in cahoots, but Stacks kicks out. It was just a trick. Oh, oh, over here. Newcomer Nima and his partner didn't get his name. They're standing there. They intimidate Gallus a little bit. Referee is distracted. Stax boinks coffee with a crowbar. Oh, Wolfgang boinks Stax but back. But referee notices and ejects Wolfgang. Probably should have got, got the match disqualified. Anyway, Stax hits a stomp for the W and he saves Tony D. 
Probably hoping for a bigger reaction here from the crowd, I was thinking, when Stax turned on Gallus. They were pretty quiet right there. I was kind of, I feel like they were hoping for kind of a coming out moment here for Stax. The crowd gets behind them, but didn't quite turn out that way. I like Stax. It's just, they haven't really done that much with him, honestly. He's just kind of there. Um, but yeah, I thought the match was pretty solid, but yeah, kind of kind of flat, honestly. We move on. The Schism offer a spot to Ivy Nile, who is now alone because the Creeds are moving up. We don't know where the Creeds are landing just yet, but, um, I mean, she could work there, but they already got, uh, the Rock's daughter or whatever the fuck her name is, so I don't know. It's probably gonna end up leading into some sort of feud between the two, but we'll see where it goes. It is Trick Williams and Carmelo Hayes going up against Finn Balor and Damian Priest with Dom Mysterio and Rhea Ripley. This is the main event. Crowd chanting Undertaker at Priest. I got a good kick out of that. Um, I mean, I I wouldn't... I don't think he really looks all that much like the Undertaker other than the fact that he has a little bit of eyeliner on his face. But, all right, made me giggle, so that's cool. Damien delivers a razor, razor's edge on Trick onto the edge of the table. Like, oh my god. God, dude, that was fucking vicious. Thumbs up. Dom distracts the referee. Rhea tosses in a brie in the briefcase. Druganoff shows up to shut that shit down. Carmelo accidentally hits Druganoff. Priest with a choke slam. Finn hits a coup de gras for the W. Uh, I hope Trick's back is okay, because holy fuck did that ever look painful. That was just unnecessarily brutal for <laughs> just a tag team match. Like, I was into it. I liked it. But, um, yeah, some nice tag moves thrown in there. Trick had a lot of energy in this match until his back got snapped in half. Pretty good. 7th then. And that's a good show for NXT this week, having consistent big names coming down from the main roster lately. Been really enjoying that. Chase U is back together now, so they're just firing on all cylinders. And with a super hot Thea Hale right now, I'm really enjoying that. And we're going to get the Dawn back. So, I mean, that's that's pretty fun. I, I, I don't know. I'm a big fan of the Dawn. It's just mostly the gimmick, but... I don't know, he's a little, you know, we'll see, we'll see where it goes once he gets back, and some pretty good wrestling all throughout, uh, you definitely gotta check out that Braun Breaker versus Ilya Druganov, that was out of control, good show overall, 7 out of 10, and now we will go to, where do I wanna go, let's go to Dynamite, let's try Dynamite out, they're in Saskatoon, Saskatoon, Canada, you know, the fucking, there's a, there's other places in Canada that, um, aren't Ontario, there's this place called Saskas Saskatchewan, I'm, I can't say it, all right, so they're there, Chris Jericho versus Commander is up next, Sask Saskatch Saskatchewan hating on Chris Jericho and Winnipeg, Chris Jericho flips them off, I, I got a giggle out of that, Commander with an incredible Spaceman walk where he walks the ropes, massive jump at the end. Still makes me just go bananas every time he does it. Thumbs up. Commander goes for a springboard Hurricanrana. Chris catches him, locks in the walls of Jericho, really, really twerking on the neck. So, I don't know, probably... I don't, di didn't look like a lion tamer, but it was fucking vicious like one. So, I, I like that. Commander forced to tap out. And Commander, like I said, still wowing me with his springboard abilities. It, it is absolutely out of control what he can do with just... He makes it look so fucking easy, man. Seriously ridiculous skill. Thumbs up for that. Jericho, a little bit sloppy in spots in this match, but he's just out there having fun. So, can't really dock him too much for that. 7 at thing, good match. Don Callis arrives, tempting Chris Jericho yet again with an offer to join up with him. Shows off some old footage of Don Callis with hair with Chris Jericho as they were a tag team in 1995. Holy fuck. Crazy thing is, I actually had a Don Callis toy from way back when I was like five years old. I remember him. He was the manager for, oh man, that it was this really uh, like freak show stable back in like 97 or something. Oh god. Anyway. Um, where were we? Shows up. Yeah, okay. Um, Chris is still thinking about joining up with Don Callis. He is quite tempted. You know, he really, really buttered him up with the, with the old footage, but no answer just yet. We got Hook. He is still trying to get his hands on Jungle Boy, but still can't get his hands on him. MJF and Adam Cole, they're hanging out at the bar. Oh, buddy. Uh, Cole brings Max back to his house for some video games. Aw, oh, so... 
This was a gr another fantastic bromant right here. I love these segments so much. I almost don't want MJF to go back as a heel. I love him so much as this, like, fake nice guy. It's amazing. Thumbs up. It is, um, ooh, we got a blind eliminator tournament match. Orange Cassidy and Darby Allen teaming up against Sammy Guevara and Danny Garcia. So, Garcia and Guevara, they're already a team in Jericho Appreciation Society, so just kind of luck of the draw. They're teaming up in this blind eliminator tournament. Sammy and Danny are not on the same page in this match. Nana, Prince Nana and Swerve with a distraction assisting Sammy. He hits the GTH for the W, and they will be advancing to the finals. Uh, interesting teamwork throughout this match between Guevara and Garcia. Just kind of doing their own things but it ends up working in the end so that was pretty good uh classic orange cassidy comedy thrown in there solid tag match overall adam cole backstage oh boy roderick strong shows up but he appears uh sorry it appears that adam cole is just way too smitten he's texting with his new best buddy mjf on his phone so he kind of just walks off and roddy is sad panda about it oh poor roddy poor roderick no respect Another Blind Eliminator tournament match. It is Big Bill and Brian Cage, the biggest tag team ever, versus MJF and Adam Cole, baby, with... Oh, and they have their matching shirts on, which is fucking adorable. Oh, my God. Cole and Cage have a push-up contest. That's hilarious. MJF keeps trying to body slam the big guys, but he keeps failing. At one point, he picks up Big Bill, and he, like, falls back, and Bill just squashes him. The selling on MJF, dude. I... Oh, my God. Masterful. Still no double clothesline, but instead we got a heat seeker from Max. Cole drops the boom, and they win, advancing to the finals. And they're going up against Danny and Sammy, so that'll be fun. Highly, stupidly, highly entertaining match. I mean, the bromance, just, I'm so over the moon with it. I love it. MJF, over the top, dramatic selling, just so funny, like straight up out of the 80s. This over the top, it's amazing. Brian Cage just being Brian Cage. I mean, f good stuff. Seven and a half. Add it then. MJF butters up the crowd after the match. Cole, all business. He's eyeing up the tag team gold. He's he's trying his best not to get uh, too into the MJF thing. So, But it's, goddamn, it's so cute. Now we got Jake Haggard backstage. He is checking in on Chris Jericho to see if he's actually considering the offer from Don Callis. Chris says he is considering it. Haggard absolutely does devastated removes the purple bucket hat gives it to chris oh my god shit is wrong shit is wrong in the jas right now folks the bucket hat is off oh my that's not good we got an owen heart cup tournament match ruby soho go with the outcast goes up against sky blue outcast get ejected from the match early uh they just got sloppy and got caught ruby still using shenanigans though fakes an injury Hits a no future, Ruby picks up a big victory. Fine match, you know, eh, fiery performance from Blue. I really liked what she did. Just, uh, yeah, not that good, though. We got QTV. Per per QTV presents a new music video from Harley Cameron. QT says he's at a loss for words, and so am I. I mean, it's not my kind of music. Uh, this mo the modern rap, just not for me. Um... But it was impressive. Like, she does the really fast rap. And, like, I can't do that shit. So, you know, that's that's pretty good. We got Swerve Strickland with Prince Nana going up against Nick Wayne and his debut match. They've been kind of hyping up this uh, young new star or new wrestler for a few weeks now. He's uh, buddies with Darby Allin. So there's, there's a connection there. Swerve putting an absolute whooping down on the new kid in front of his mother. How dare you? Nick gets back into the fight with a wicked top rope. Poison Rana, hell yeah. Swerve cuts off the run with a top rope powerbomb. That just looked painful. Wayne appears to have an injury here. Swerve doesn't give a shit. Delivers a driver for the W. Impressive showing here for the young rookie. Uh, really good uh, underdog storyline throughout this match. I personally was expecting a little bit more, but um, it wasn't bad by any means. 7 out of 10, still thought it was a good match. And that was the final match, but we still have one more segment. We are about to find out who will be the final members for the Blackpool Combat Club and the Elite for Blood and Guts. Don Callis by himself comes out. He starts badmouthing Kenny Omega yet again. That's what he does. Kenny ain't having it. He starts plowing through security guards until he gets stopped by 
It's Pack. Oh my God, the Pack is back. The fifth member of BCC. They beat down Kenny Omega, but then Kenny, in epic fashion, announces his final member. It's a Bushi. Oh. The Elite arrive to save Kenny, and the show ends. Another awesome week for the best buddies, Adam Cole and Maxwell Jacob Friedman. I, I can, I literally, I just want cameras on these guys 24/7, and I will watch that. Blind Eliminator Tournament continues to be a lot of fun. And now we're set for the finals there. Eh, you know, it's a little bit predictable, the finals, but I think it'll be fun. Blood and Guts set to be an absolute fucking war. It's going to be a ton of fun. Good show overall. 7 out of 10. Now we'll go to Rampage, where they're still in Saskatoon. Uh, we're starting off with Daddy Magic and Cool Hand Ange versus Keith Lee and Dustin Rhodes. Simply limitless. I thought Keith Lee was getting out of the tag team thing. I guess I'm mistaken. So Dustin, getting the majority of the ass whooping as he usually does, uh, gets hit, uh, gets the hot tag to Keith Lee. Lee absolutely destroys the JAS, hits a supernova for the victory. Solid opening match. I mean, kind of just, yeah, it was fine. Not the biggest names, but, you know, pretty good. Taya Valkyrie now going up against Izzy McQueen, just a, a local talent here to Saskatoon. Uh, Valkyria stomps in Izzy's face for a quick squash victory. The champion Tony Storm shows up talking trash, claiming she's beaten everybody. Taya reminds her they haven't even touched before. So interesting way to phrase it, but um, yeah, challenge is is set and is accepted by Tony Storm. So we got Taya Valkyria going up against Tony Storm for the championship. Uh, yeah, it could be pretty good. I mean, it'd be kind of nice to see Taya fighting with someone that's not Jade Cardgill. So yeah, I'm, I'm fairly excited. We move on. It is Trent Beretta with Chucky e. T versus Lance Archer with Jake the Snake Roberts. What's up? Archer hits a blackout and a gnarly lariat because why the hell not for a dominating victory. Uh, must say, great to see the Murderhawk Monster back in AEW. Really, really enjoy this guy. Solid match overall. Lance beats down the best friends, calls out Orange Cassidy for the All-Atlantic Championship. Orange comes out for the save and then Jake Roberts... Um, Honestly, uh, it's kind of hard to understand what he says. He sounds like he has just uh, came out of a fucking landmine after, like, I don't know what I'm going for here. But he sounds rough. He sounds rough. But, um, yeah, Orange Cassidy versus Lance for the title. That could be some good shit. We move on is Takeshka with Don Callis versus it is Kenny Omega's uh, training partner, Men... Oh, fuck, I had it. Mentalo? Mentalo. Mentalo. There we go. I got it. Takeshka dominating throughout the match. We got a fun little comeback from Mentalo. Quickly gets shut down by a reverse driver and a senton splash from the top. Takeshka grabs a W. Uh, definitely some more mind games being played here from Don Callis poking at Kenny Omega. I'm curious if they're going to be pulling out more of like his old friends from other companies and just like beat the shit out of them. That could be really fun, but yeah, not bad. And now it's time for the main event. It is Athena versus Willow Nightingale. A pretty slow start for Willow. She doesn't seem all, all the way into it, but she does get back into the fight. Absolutely obliterating Athena with a pounce and a spine buster. Love the sell from Athena. She just absolutely got wiped out by that pounce. Thumbs up. Willow with a great counter catches Athena in a pin and picks up a huge W over the Ring of Honor Women's Champion. Good match. Nice performance all around. Uh, Athena's selling was on point, and Willow's pounce was on point. I love a good pounce, and Willow, I think she has the best one that I can think of in the business right now. Not many people do it. 7 out of 10, good match. And that's the end of the show. Uh, admittedly, not not the best rampage. Kind of squash heavy. Not a lot of, you know, quality matches. Decent show overall, but, I mean, it, it's, it's missable, I would say. 5.5 out of 10. And now we will go, where are we going? You want to go to SmackDown? Well, yeah, we'll go to SmackDown. Where was, SmackDown was in Raleigh, North Carolina. North Kakalaki, if, if you will. Starting off with Bianca Belair. She looks absolutely amazing. Her outfit is out of control. Bianca lays down a promo. She gets cut off by Charlotte Flair. Boo! Flair predicting it will be Flair versus Bianca at SummerSlam. At this point, you would think the champion Asuka would come out and, you know, shut that shit down. But no, it just goes to her. She's just watching casually backstage, not doing anything about it. 
Uh, admittedly, a bit of a shaky opening here. Belair was solid, then Flair comes out. She's messing up her lines, man. She's just, she's not there, man. Not, nah, didn't like it. We got pretty deadly Kip Wilson and Dalton Castles versus the Brawling Brutes. Castles exposes the turnbuckle. Reg bonks his face into it. Leg drop from Pretty Deadly. And add a W as well. Pretty Deadly picking up a win over the Brutes. Uh, you know, the Brutes brawled and Pretty Deadly outsmarted them. Pretty solid, safe, standard tag. Charlotte Flair backstage tells Adam Pierce that she's leaving for the night. Oh, hell yeah. EO and Bailey arrive. They start flashing around the money in the bank briefcase. Charlotte returns. No! Selena Vega versus Bailey is up next with EO Sky and her briefcase. Selena using her flip flop, flip flop, beating the shit out of Bailey. Ref just doesn't care about that. I mean, it should be a disqualification, but whatever. Shenanigans from Bailey. She hits the rose plant for the W, and you guessed it, it's another short match for Selena. What the fuck? I'm getting angry. Decent match overall. Shotzi appears on the screen. Her hair is still a mess from last week. Bailey cutting it and all that. Shotzi then decides, I'm going to town with the buzzers on the hair. We don't get to see the result, which kind of disappoints me, but maybe next week. We got Jay Uso. He cuts a fiery promo. Paul Heyman and Solo. Solo looking kind of fucking sick, honestly. He looks fucking gray and sweaty. Looks pretty rough. They cut Jay off. Heyman goes to work with the head games, cutting deep into Jay's head. Solo speaks a little bit. Kind of looks like he's going to throw up. Then he eats a super kick from Jay. Brawl breaks out. Heyman eats a super kick. Looked fucking terrible, but it's Paul Heyman. He's not a wrestler. Made me laugh, though. Crowd goes absolutely banana for Jay as he's about to take Paul's head off with a chair. But Solo takes the blow instead, and they escape. Great segment right here. I mean, fiery, very fired up promo from Jay as is, as is expected. He's been fantastic. Uh, yeah, I like this segment. Thumbs up. Now it is time for a fatal four-way number one contenders match for the United States Championship. Santos Escobar versus Butch versus Grayson Waller versus AJ Styles. Santos with a triple sunset flip powerbomb of Doom Thing. That was dope. Thumbs up for that. Awesome. Carrion appears on the screen, whooping the OC's ass. AJ is surprised Pikachu about it. Waller hits a rolling stunner. Santos soaring through the skies. Hits a splash, stealing the pin on Waller for the W. Uh, you know, an enjoyable, fairly messy four-way as they generally are. Uh, a little bit short. Uh, they were teasing AJ Styles and Butch a little bit there. But it appears that they're still going with AJ and Karrion Cross for some reason. It's been dog shit. I wish they would get off it. But yeah, pretty decent fatal four-way. Could have been a lot better though. With the, with the talent that you had in the ring right there, should have been better than that. Street Profits are back in the parking lot. They meet up with... It's Bobby Lashley. Oh, snap. Looks like Bobby has, has calmed down. He's not angry anymore, and he's back. So not really much other than that. They kind of just say hello to each other, and that's really cool. We got LA Knight. He's cutting a quick little promo here. Promises that he will be a champion soon in this company. Crowd is still super duper hot for LA Knight. Makes me very happy. Still wish they pulled the trigger and gave him money in the bank, but... Uh, he could still go out there and, and fire up the crowd, get arguably the biggest reaction from them, so pretty good shit. Main event time, WWE Women's Championship on the line, Asuka defending against Bianca Belair. EO, Bailey, and Flair purchasing front row tickets for this match because that's the thing you can do. Flair gets involved, hitting Bianca with a spear, and the match ends. That just boo, that's garbage, I hate that. Bailey and EO are on the outside lurking with the money in the in the bank briefcase. Uh, they look like they're going to cash in. EO goes in, she hits a moonsault, and then Asuka pops up, sprays the mist at Bailey, and she cheeses it. She's out of here, and the show ends. Uh, not 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 the best show this week. I mean, Bianca was good. I really enjoy Bianca right now. She's fired up. She's angry. Really enjoyed that. Bloodline stuff was good as well. The rest of it, I mean, and the LA Knight uh, little, uh, what do you call them, uh, promo. That was nice. That was nice. Fatal 4-Way was a letdown. Selena Vega was a letdown because they won't let her have a match over five minutes. Yeah, not my favorite show this week. Five out of ten. I say you can skip it if you'd like. And now we will go back to AEW with Collision. They were in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. That's awesome. Starting off this show with a 2 
out of three falls match for the World Tag Team Championships. We got FTR defending against the Bullet Club. Juice stops FTR hitting a shatter machine. White nails a flatliner. Bullet Club is up 1-0 in this match. Dax goes loco on the hot tag. He takes out Bullet Club. Hits Juice with, with a brain buster. We got a near fall right there. FTR hits a razor's edge into a neckbreaker combo. Still can't pick up a fall against Bullet Club right here. I'm going nuts at this point. Thumbs up for that. FTR finally pull off a shatter machine to tie up the match at one apiece. Dax tries to powerbomb White on the outside. They tumble over the barricade and they take a pretty gnarly fall onto the concrete floor. They have doctors come over to check on them. Uh, they both pop up and start hockey fighting, so I, I'm, I'm assuming that they're fine, which was also quite funny, so I'll give that a thumbs up. Crowd goes absolutely bananas as all four men, they meet in the middle of the ring, barely standing, and they just start fucking brawling with each other. They're going nuts. We got Wheeler and Juice, they take a rough fall to the floor, it's just a kind of a theme of this match. White tunes up the band, he looks like he's about to hit a super kick, but it's a fake out. Slips in a sharpshooter, I mean, oh my god, that was, that was spectacular. FTR top it with a dual sharpshooter of their own. Uh, Bullet Club holding on to their hands so they won't tap out. I mean, oh, just so much attention to detail. Time almost up here. We got like three minutes left in the 60-minute match. Dax locks in a deep, deep sharpshooter. Just pulling it back, wrenching on poor Juice. And he has to tap out. FTR retain their championships. Holy jumping, man. That was just, that was epic. I mean, there's really not many other ways to put it when you have a match that is one hour long, but it was a marathon of fantastic wrestling. I mean, it was it's all there. It just kind of depends if you like long matches or not. Me, personally, I'm not over the moon about long matches. You know, Iron Man matches, they're not my thing that much, but I thought they did a spectacular job in this one, it's particularly the second fall that whole second fall situation was spectacular. I thought FTR was getting swept. Really looked like Bullet Club was going to lock it down. The near falls were out of control. Hard hitting, of course. With the, I mean, the chops getting thrown out there were out of control. Lots of love for the Hart family with the sharpshooters. And, oh, man, lots of that. And, my God, man, I was just... <laughs> that was a hell of a way to open up the show. Eight and a half out of ten. That was a great match. We got the Women's Owen Hart Tournament Final. It is Ruby Soho going up against Willow Nightingale. Ruby grabs a spray paint can thingy, uh, plants it on Willow. The referee is distracted by that. Ruby sprays Willow, hits a no future, but Willow kicks out. And I will admit, I did not like the way that she kicked out. It was like so nonchalant, like just kind of rolled a little bit, almost like you're just fidgeting in bed or something. I wouldn't be surprised if Ruby pulled her aside after and be like, yo, don't do that shit no more. Anyway, uh, Soho goes for another spray can hit thing. She misses, gets pounced by Willow, and then powerbombed into a new dimension. Nightingale pins and wins the Women's Owen Hart Foundation Tournament Match Cup thing. Yeah, awesome. Solid match overall. No interfering from the outcast. That was nice. You still got the shenanigans with the with the paint and whatnot. But I was it was refreshing to see uh, Outcast not getting involved in this. I was very nervous that they were going to be you know getting involved and and yeah I wouldn't have liked that very much. Uh, very happy that Willow got the W right here. Well deserved. I think they picked the right one right there. We move on. It is the Kings of the Black Throne with their ridiculous name. It's Malachi and Brody King. Just destroying a couple of local dudes in a squash match. It was it was what it was. Andrade walks out. He starts mean mugging everybody. Referees tell him to get out of here. Hey, get out of here. And he gets out of here. We got the men's Owen Hart tournament final match now. It is Ricky Starks versus CM Punk. Ricky goes for an elbow drop. Punk avoids it by just casually sitting up. I love that. That was spectacular. That was great. I love the look on CM Punk's face. Like, oh, he knows. He knows. Thumbs up. Starks nearly nearly caught in a front face lock. He fights out. Ricky counters. A roll up with his own. Grabs the tights for the three count. Winning the men's Owen Hart tournament match. Uh, yeah, just another solid match. 
Uh, Punk playing mind games all throughout with Ricky, that was pretty nice. Uh, I like the ending of the match with the roll-up and stuff. I, I thought that was pretty good. CM Punk selling, like, he's just so shocked that he lost the match. And then we have Jushin Thunder Liger. He presents the cup to Ricky Starks randomly. Ricky just grabs the cup. He doesn't even notice that it's Jushin Thunder Liger. Like, what the fuck? And he just walks off. I beat that was... That was some disrespect right there, Ricky. And that is the end of Collision. Uh, pretty fun show in Calgary. Lots of nods to the Hart family all throughout. That was great. I love that. Opening match was obviously epic, but it, I mean, it took uh, half the show, so there's that. And I feel like because that match was so long, it didn't, I don't know, I felt like the two final matches for the Owen Hart they were both pretty underwhelming, and, and I was expecting a lot more out of those matches. Maybe it's because the first match was so damn long, they didn't have enough time. Maybe if they cut out the Kings of the Black Throne match, you might have had some more time. Overall, I was pretty let down by those two final matches. I was hoping for a lot better, but they did at least. I feel like they picked the right winners. I like Willow, and I think Ricky, those are, yeah, I like that. Six and a half out of ten for Collision. And because there wasn't enough wrestling this week, we have Battle of the Belts. I don't remember what number they're on, but probably like seven or something. And they're still in Calgary. This is basically just a continuation of Collision. It just kicks right off where we left off here. And they start with the All-Atlantic Championship match. Orange Cassidy defending against Lance Archer with Jake the Snake Roberts. Oh, yeah. Orange with the mind games with Archer. And then he goes over to Jake the Snake and he does the, the Orange Cassidy kicks. I loved it. Or uh, fucking Jake. Jake was gonna take his head off. That was oh, that was so funny. Thumbs up for that. Lance starts plowing through innocent security guards, trying to get Cassidy. Even Orange uses them. He start, starts grabbing uh, security guards and piling them on Archer like a dog pile situation. That was awesome. Uh, Jake the Snake tries to DDT Orange, but Archer won't let him do it. No, what the heck. Uh, fighting continues on the outside. Orange, last second, gets back into the ring. Lance gets counted out, and Orange Cassidy retains. Um, highly entertaining match. I mean, I love the Orange Cassidy comedy. Uh, works really well with Lance Archer and Jake the Snake. I loved it. Uh, the match overall was well done. Um, Matchmaking Archer looked like a monster. That was really good. And you have Orange Cassidy just barely hanging on to this championship. I think he's like 26-0 now with uh, retaining that championship. It's absolutely out of control. He's basically getting stretchered out of the arena every single after the end of the matches. This one, he actually did look like he might be hurt. But I, I really do, I don't know. 7 out of 10, good match. The Acclaimed arrive for some fun in, with the Calgary fans. They accept the challenge from QTV. A little bit of a scissor fest, and they out. I mean, it's an awesome little Acclaimed thing. A good little rap. Crowd was loving it. Thumbs up. We move on to an AEW Women's Championship match. It is Tony Storm defending against... Or, sorry, she is with Ruby. Defending against Taya Valkyrie. Taya hits a vicious Tony... Uh, Tony Storm style hip attack looked great, and then the satellite feed cuts out. I didn't get to see the outcome of this match. They said, "Oh yeah, the satellite feed," but it, they said that Tony Storm retains. So that fuck, that's just disappointing as fuck. Ricky Starks and Willow Nightingale are presented with the championships and their trophies for, uh, from Martha Hart for their Owen Cup tournament match. Nice little spot here, and now the main event: TNT Championship match, Luchasaurus. With Christian versus Sean Spears. Spears gets distracted by Christian. Luchasaurus grabs him, choke slams him through a table. Not a big deal. Christian sets up a chair into the corner. That backfires. Luchasaurus goes head first into that. Thanks a lot. Spears has it won, but yet again, he gets distracted by Christian. Luchasaurus takes his head off with a lariat to retain the TNT Championship. Uh, Christian holding the championship in celebration instead of Luchasaurus. You're you're such a dick, Christian. Come on, man. Solid match overall. God damn it, Sean Spears, you need to focus. I I I always get a little frustrated when that kind of shenanigans goes down. Like Christian just like grabbed the rope basically and was like in the process of standing up, and Sean Spears just like, oh, I'm just gonna stop doing my finisher and and, and say, hey, get out of here. I hate it. I it, it looks so stupid. It makes the person uh, getting distracted look like an absolute fucking moron. But yeah, it is what it is. An all right match and an all right 
Battle of the Belts, I mean, opener and the Acclaim were a lot of fun, but the rest was just kind of there. I think it was, I think the big problem with this, their whole thing was, oh, we're having three hours of live television. I just think it's too much. It's oversaturated. You're putting too many matches in there, and you're not letting, I don't know, it's, it's just like the FTR thing was great. You gave them all the time in the world. That, that yeah, no doubt. I just feel like it's a little bit too much is getting put in there. You got too many cooks in the kitchen at times. I think they need to try and slow shit down a little bit and just, you know, you don't have to have 15 matches on every uh, collision or whatever. Just, you know, settle it down a little bit. Don't go to WWE route where you have like four minutes of wrestling on a three-hour show and the rest is just self-promotion, recaps, replays, so on and so forth. But... Yeah, it was a, it was an okay show. I mean, if you want a lot of wrestling and a satellite feed, you know, kicking out during a championship match, go ahead and watch Battle of the Belts. It was it was what it was. And now, we will finish off with the three stars of the week. We got some pretty, you know, we got some pretty good matches in here this week. I'm going to start out with a couple of shout-outs. I want to shout out Becky Lynch versus Zoe Starks on Raw this week. Uh Zoe Really starting to solidify her, herself as a main event player in the women's division. She didn't pick up the win here, or maybe she did. I, I can't remember. But she looked great. She was uh, right there with Becky. So I like that they're putting her on the same playing field because I think Zoe Stocks is great. And I want to shout out MJF and Adam Cole versus Big Bill and Brian Cage. The, the bromance, it's so fucking cute. It's a very, very silly match. Lots of over-the-top selling from MJF, but it's just an extremely entertaining match. Very, very funny. So if you want a nice, funny match, check that one out. And now for the official three stars of the week, starting with the third star, it is... It's The Miz versus Ciampa. No disqualification match on Monday Night Raw. Just a great match. I mean, The Miz, I, I, I still think he's underrated. The guy can put on a great match with anybody. Champa looking like NXT Champa again, which makes me very, very happy. Great match right there. Second star goes to... This was a tough one, man. Between the first and second star, it's kind of a pick em, but I'm going to go with Breaker versus Ilya Dragunov on NXT. I mean, Ilya Dragunov is just a sensation. Such an incredibly talented wrestler. So good at selling. I mean, and Braun Breaker, man, at, uh, he's really found his stride. Like, he's been putting on some banger matches. He's been fighting some good competition lately, which, I mean, oh, man. I am pleasantly surprised with Braun Breaker lately. He has been great, and that was a great match this week. First star goes to... It's going to FTR and the Bullet Club. Two out of three falls match on Collision. I mean, it's, like I said, it's not my favorite thing to have a match be an hour long. It's, uh, but I thought they did a good job. I didn't feel bored. I was very, very invested in that second fall. That was excellent. Uh, generally, these two out of three matches, two out of three fall matches, are very predictable. They tend to follow the same blueprint over and over again. You got one team gets the first fall, the other team ties it up, and then you got a crazy last fall. It kind of just makes it like, oh, it's just a tag team match with... Anyway, um, it was good, though. I thought it had a really good flow. I like the chemistry between the two teams. Uh, it's a little bit old school. You got FTR. They're definitely more on that old school style of wrestling, more, um, I don't know, just a lot of beating down. I, I like them quite a bit. It was a good match. Obviously, it's my first star of the week. And there you go, everybody. That is the show this week. Thank you so much for listening and all that great stuff. You can go check it out on the YouTube channel. They get uploaded over there. There's also some other uh, Let's Plays of me playing video games on the channel as well. If you want to check all that out, that would be awesome. Uh, the upcoming GamerCast is recorded, ready to go. Probably dropping that on Tuesday. And that will be a versus episode, 1998 versus 2004. And we're going to be finding out which year was bigger and badder. But regardless, those are two big hitting years in gaming. And we're just going to go back, uh, take a look at what came out those years, what got started, the influences that those games still have on the fucking gaming landscape today. Really fun episode, so you can check that out later on this week and go back and listen to any of the prior GX GamerCast, WrestleCast, HockeyCast, all that great stuff. Just uploaded to HockeyCast the other day. You can go check that out. We are in the off season for hockey, but there's still lots of news and stuff going on. Uh, the next HockeyCast, I'm going to go through my 
uh, season predictions and go through everything that I got wrong and maybe a thing or two that I got right because I think I got a thing or two right. But yeah, we'll be doing that. That'll be a lot of fun. And I I kind of missed it, but I have um, I just passed my one year anniversary for this podcast. So yay, uh, one year of the podcast. I uh, episode. Uh, the next GX Gamer cast is episode 50, so that's kind of be, I guess, uh, we'll just kind of pair that in as a one-year celebration and big 50th episode of the Gamer cast. So that'll be a lot of fun. I have, pretty sure, I don't know, man, there's like five games. I can't, uh, I'm really like all over the map which one I want to pick. I I have my ideas, but it'll just, when it comes out, it'll come out and it'll be fun and that'll be great. So thank you everybody so much for listening. You're awesome. Enjoy the rest of your day, weekend, whatever. And we will be back with some more GX Plus Cast.